What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, episode five of the Texans franchise. And we, of course, came off of that shootout loss against the Chargers last week. And as I mentioned towards the end of that video, probably just going to be doing a lot of, of simming and sort of just getting this first season out of the way. And I think that's what this episode is going to be about, re-signing the players we want, checking out upgrades, figuring out what we're looking for in the draft, and maybe we'll make another trade or two. Some of the guys that are here are were here because I was sort of hoping they would help us with our, our goals of trying to put together some wins this year. But so far, that has not come to fruition. So what we'll probably do is we'll sim to week eight, and then once we get to week eight, we'll take a look. If we're still winless, we're definitely going to be doing some trades. And then, um, yeah. Also, if you mentioned anything in a comment about the last episode um, and you're expecting a response before this episode or something like that, just know that I, I do record back to back usually because I my weekends are my really my free time. So I, I literally just recorded episode four, five minutes before I started recording this. So um, not that I was ignoring anybody's questions at all. And I'm sure I'll get to them and I'm not, you know, forgetting something, but I just, I record back to back because that's just what's best for my schedule. So, um, yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's start getting down to this. I'm not going to worry about all this forecast stuff. We are going to go to the upgrade players and check that out. And of course, Jonathan Grenard with his performance and his dev trait is going to be the one that gets this. And we are going to do one, two power rusher. And then we are going to do another one towards Speed Rusher. So we got plus three on the last one. This one, ooh, one to Excel, one to Finesse, one Tackle, and two to Awareness. So pretty good there. Um, He's looking pretty good. I wish he was a little bit faster, but that's obviously not affecting him too much as he's still making a lot of great plays. His Awareness is getting up there now. That's good to see. And we do have a lot more players ready to negotiate. We'll get to that in a second. First, I want to check out to see if there is any new stories Justin Simmons has officially been put on IR it looks like Darius Leonard out for the season a lot of injuries no new stories for the draft which I'm not too happy but oh here's one Keenan Bingham only started playing football as a high school senior but that hasn't stopped the wide receiver from cementing himself as a legit prospect in I feel like that's an unfinished tweet well, now we're all going to be wondering what he what he's a legitimate prospect in. No, just I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, and this here is the man that uh, Daniel Jeremiah was talking about in his tweet. Keenan Bingham, 6'4", 232, 21 years old, out of Baylor. I'll just take a look and see what we have. He's definitely going to be more of that big body type that is not very fast. B, catching traffic, though. C, for release. C, short route running. Uh, so I did make a note of him down there. Um... I have him as favorite already. I do. Okay, I do have him on the on the favorites list. So, just wanted to show you guys who he was referring to. All right, so let's go ahead and let's sim past the Jags game, get to the bye week, and see if we can get our first win. We do not. <laughs> All right, still winless. Got some more player upgrades here. Okay, quite a few of them. Okay, Chris Conley first up, and playmaker is our sweet spot here. Yeah, I don't care, man. I'm definitely going to take advantage of this until they fix this a little bit. Especially with some of these low overall receivers. So Chris Conley gets plus one to Playmaker. Doesn't actually up his overall at all. Malik Collins is going to get one. And we're going to up his Power Rusher. I don't like having D tackles that are just good at speed rushing. You know, I, I'd rather have them be run stoppers first, maybe Power Rushers, and then Speed Rush be the last just because they are in the middle, they need to have more of the strength, like like Blacklock here. We're going to up his power rushing. I know that the Texans cut him or traded him to my Vikings, actually, in real life, so I'm sort of excited to see what he does. And I, I've been doing some reading. You know, like I said before, I did, I'm did. i trying to learn as much as I can about this Texans team because I know that fans are very passionate about their teams. And, you know, I, I hate when I see some guys doing things that are completely unrealistic towards the team that they're using, especially when it's like my own team. And I know the situation. I know Blacklock is somebody that you all don't like. All right. If you're a Texans fan, I get it. All right. But in this in this game, we're going to pretend that he's not a slouch. And you guys don't think he doesn't care about football because <laughs> he's actually playing really good for us. 
And um, yeah, Brevin Jordan gets one. Happy to see him get one. He has been awesome. We're going to do that to possession. There we go. I wish there was one that just gave you upgrades for just receiving. You know, I know that there's a, the vertical threat, but both of them always do blocking, and I really don't care about blocking at tight end. Not that I shouldn't, but I, I just don't. And then Christian Harris, we're going to keep towards the pass coverage for him. There we go. Oh, he got one to speed. That is awesome. And two to zone and two to awareness. So now his speed is 91. We've got to build this guy up. And then Tavier Thomas gets one. We're going to do that to zone. Got to even that out a little bit. Excel, awareness, and zone. Good, good, good. And I'm going to go into the weekly strategy this time because I do want to adjust who the focus players are. And actually, before I do that, let's go to manage staff and get some of these upgrades. See if we can get some more XP for these guys, right? Let's do one of these, though. Now, this will cost us a lot less to upgrade. So that's I think that's a good one to get. And now we go here, and these are only eight points, which is good. Boost run blocking power, we can do that. Or we could do boost caring for halfbacks, that would be nice. Defensively, haven't really touched this side too much yet. Boost pursuit for corners. Not much on this side that I really care about. Player personnel is something we definitely need to think about here. We're going to start get these taken care of. Maybe we'll just spend those on here just to get this started anyway, because yeah. we're going to need to be able to trade and get some good options for trading down the line. So there we go. And now this is what I want to affect, because these guys are sort of already getting there, you know? But we're going to move... I want to get some other guys up there, like Damian Pierce, who has got normal. These guys with question marks, I feel like sometimes, as much as it is good to get that extra boost to them, I want to get boost to the guys that don't have that, right? So somebody like Nico Collins, and then I definitely want to get Christian Harris as the other one. So there we go. And we got some more upgrades because of that. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Damian Pierce. Good move to put him there. And now this one, I am going to continue with power back because that is our, our scheme fit. But I will be going back to elusive and like more like a two to one ratio, right? I'll do two to power and do one to elusiveness. So I like to keep that stuff balanced. We're going up against the undefeated Raiders. 5-0 and versus 0-5. and I do not have a good feeling about this game. And now let's take a look at the re-signs. I haven't really touched this a whole lot. We have plenty of cap room. Um, I think that we're going to try to move on from Marlon Mack. I know he's interested in re-signing, but I'm not as interested as, as he is. So uh, I don't think we're going to bring back uh, Grieger, Grieger Hill. Tavier Thomas is somebody that I think I do want to bring back. So let's go ahead and let's negotiate with him. All right, so he wants just, uh, okay, so last offer, we did a one-year deal. He did not like that. So that must have been this team-friendly deal. So let's do neutral risk. We'll bring it up a little bit. See, it goes from one year to two years. So actually, you know what? Let's let's go back to our custom offer, and let's just raise the bonus up a little bit. Maybe he'll just take that, right? Because who knows? We might not want to keep him long-term. So let's go here. We'll just up the bonus a little bit, see if he takes that. We'll, we'll uh, bring this up to two. So we'll make it three and a half million. I think that's a decent offer. There we go. And Tavier Thomas will resign one year, three and a half million. I think that's a good deal for us and for him. And then David Long is somebody who I think would be a really good piece to keep building. Looking at his player card here. He's young, only 24 years old. He's got some decent speed. His tackling is crap, but you know we don't really care about that. Um, injury, he's got good injury. Okay, yeah, let's let's go ahead and let's offer him a contract. Start negotiations. He might want a little bit longer term because of his age, and I'm okay with that. You know, we think about it once Nelson and um, uh, King are gone, because we're not going to be keeping them long term. You know, it's going to be Stingley, Long. 
And if we bring in somebody else, and if Thomas ends up, we re-sign him after this season. So we're going to go with this neutral. Ooh, he doesn't want to sign with us, does he? Okay. Um, let's just give a shot with the neutral. This is our first time in negotiating with him and see what he what he thinks of a three-year deal worth, uh, what is this, a total of about nine million, nine and a half million. Oh yeah, right in front of me, 9.6. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna offer him this first and we'll just see what he says. Oh, okay, dude. Lose the toot a little bit here, man. I could find a better, we know we're not that good, but you don't have to rub it in like that, man. Jeez. But I like that, man. I really like that. That is a good thing for this game. Because too many times players will take a contract just because it was offered to them. And he said straight up, and it's the truth, right? A little, little snotty if you ask me, but it's the truth. He could probably get the same offer from a handful of teams and not have to suck because we're 0-5. So I like that. I really like that. Dearness Johnson, definitely want to try to bring him back. I don't know if I want to do a multi-year deal, though. Yeah, I really don't want to do a three-year deal. He doesn't have much interest in re-signing. So we're going to drop this to... Um, but he is a good... Even if it's just, you know, for... Yeah, you know what? We will we'll do neutral with him as well. I'm not trying to overpay for these guys that aren't going to be long-term solutions. We'll just get his his take on it. Okay. All right. So same sort of same sentiment as David Long. He he's like, well, why why should I stay here? Obo, I definitely want to bring Obo back. Definitely want to bring him back. He has awesome interest. I'm glad to hear it. Neutral risk. Um, he's played up above his his play. I think he I think he knows that a little bit. Uh, we will do a one year deal because he was hurt this year. And there we go. Obo is back. He'll be here for another season. Perfect. I'm not gonna be bringing back Kelvin Beecham. Davian Taylor definitely bringing him back. Three year deal. I think that's well worth it. He's 24 years old. We know he's pretty good uh, young linebacker, and we don't have many of those. So I think we will do a three year deal for him. Um, we're going to do a player friendly. Oh, four year. Okay. I can get behind that. Be a great solid, you know, depth guy for us moving forward and see if he takes this. He's, his interest level is low. So we are going to have to pay for some of these guys. And I'm sort of learning as we go. I can't just get away with neutral risk. So we'll do player friendly. And there we go. Davian Taylor resigns for a four year extension like that. Uh, Bo Melton is another guy that we haven't really seen much from. Uh, JC Treader, unfortunately, I'm going to wait him out to see what he drops to. He might drop in overall or he might retire for all we know. Same with Brian Bulaga. Uh, Landon Collins, I do not plan on bringing back. Uh, I just I feel like that's one of the areas we need to hit on the draft or free agency. Same with Chris Conley. We'll, we'll see what happens after the season hits. Blake Cashman, we can't negotiate with him yet, but he will definitely be, be uh, coming back, hopefully. So that is the... Sort of the gist of it. Let's let's take a run at Bo Melton here. He doesn't have much interest, which is is understandable. I don't really know. Like I haven't even been able to see him play. So we're gonna do. I'll do team friendly, and then I will bring this up to one million. So we'll do one year for two million, or three million almost. Yeah. Let's see if he takes that. Okay, so he's not happy about that one. Okay, so we're going to have to come back to the drawing board with him. What do you know? We lost. <laughs> we're 0-6. We get a couple of nice upgrades here. Mims and Green. I really like Mims. Definitely have some work to do with him, but if um, if we can keep it up. Oh, he got one to speed. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Okay, 93 speed. That's big. And then Kenyon Green, of course, our young tackle or tackle, our young guard. Um, we're going to go one to Agile. Keep that in line. There we go. Got one to lead block. That's big. We'll soon know what his dev is. I'm pretty sure it's a star, though. Can't remember off the top of my head what these guys have straight away, but I'm pretty sure it's star. We do have a new story about a quarterback. John Bean has been biding time waiting to be the starting quarterback at Southern Miss, and his opportunity has finally come. And then with the reactions page, we have a few stories here, which I love to see. You talk about elite leadership from a quarterback, and it starts with Colin Walters. Seems to put Harvard on his back each week without hesitation. That is something really good to know. Uh, you never know. Maybe, you know, maybe we need to go quarterback. We don't know. We'll see at the end of the season how I'm feeling. 
um, forget top plays show forget top plays shows that Brian Hendricks run deserves NFTs minted of it right now. The USF halfback and anni not annihilated, not one, not two, but three, I'm assuming defenders. And then the last one, left guard Tim Moss, no longer the darling of the draft like we thought he'd be, looking very vulnerable. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the guys that are being mentioned here. All right, so you can see Colin Walters is the top quarterback prospect. And we are seeing here he's got B deep, B under pressure, which is good. Potential for A short accuracy and B medium accuracy. 6'3", 228, 22 years old, of course, out of Harvard. Whether the window is open or closed, he's slinging it. Beautiful spiral. Could use some improvement at recognizing pressure, okay? Does well to avoid sacks. Plays well, plays well within and outside of the pocket. Fast over the top style, throwing motion. And he's definitely not gonna be a scrambler at all. And you can see here, this is what I really like is that they are unlocking everything and giving you a range. They're giving you a ceiling, right? Which I love now. This is a big change and I really, I really do like it. We know he's got A awareness. We know his break sack is horrible. We know his play action is mediocre. His deep accuracy is pretty good. His under pressure is pretty good. We know his throw on the run is, can be all over the place. We know his short accuracy is at the very bottom gonna be mediocre for the class and could be good. So I, I, liked, I like seeing this stuff. And then there's John Bean, who was the guy that just got anointed the starter for Southern Miss. He had that story about being, you know, waiting his chance to start. He's 21 years old, same body style as the other quarterback, Walters. And you can see here, he's slinging it, beautiful spiral, gets happy feet, does well to avoid sacks. Lightning quick release, almost ignores lower half. We don't know what his awareness is yet, but it's not looking like it's gonna be very high. And this could change, of course, if he has another story or something of these guys, these things will change. But right now it's not looking like he's gonna be a, a, a good prospect unless things change. And then here's Brian Hendricks, 5'9", 215, 22 out of USF. The man with the needs an NFT printed for him now. He's good at securing the ball, holds onto the ball well, needs to work on simple concentration drops, not worried about that. Fights for every yard, good to hear that. Avoids big hits following the catch and excels at creating yards after the catch. So that's that's a good thing. Good to great speed. And he's got B's for break tackle carrying, A for juke move, C for stiff arm. So this guy's gonna be an elusive guy with maybe a little bit of trucking involved. But yeah, mainly just an elusive back. Uh, where's his catching? So his catching could potentially be pretty good. We'll see if that comes to fruition or not, but um, definitely an elusive back. Somebody we will definitely keep an eye on as well, being round one grade. And then here's Tim Moss, who had a bad story. 6'5", 333. He was, at one point, I believe he was one of the top five prospects. And now he... It says he looks vulnerable. He doesn't have great, you know, on maybe his injury. Yeah, his injury is F. So that's something to really keep an eye on. He has some good grades, but again, if you can't stay healthy, you know, how how worthy are you? And then I forgot to look at Tyler Hartman, who was the story from the last uh, little time I looked at that. And here he is, uh, does not look to be a great prospect. He is the top middle linebacker, but the middle linebacker class is very, very crappy in this draft class. He's 23, 6'1", 227. Uh, no zone coverage, everything is bad. D's, C's, C is, might be his best one. So definitely not somebody we're gonna be looking at. And he's got bad speed too, yeah. No, no, no bueno. Sorry, Hartman. You can be good at Northern Iowa, but probably not with, uh, with the NFL. We do know quite a bit about some strong safeties, which is really good to see. Like I said, those are some guys that I'm really gonna be sort of keying in on. And right now, Frank Frank Bonner looks pretty good. Uh, Quincy Booker does. Just looking at the, the four ratings on the right side, Gabe Cole looks really bad. Sort of in between for DJ Dunn, but now we're getting into these day three guys. I'm not too concerned with that. What about strong free safeties? Yeah, we have a few free safeties we have some information on. Daryl Green, potential A hit power. That would be really good to know. Can't cover man, but that's okay. Zone is okay. B, tackle. So this could be a really, yeah, he's run support. I see that now. Could be an excellent option for our strong safety position. Same here with Dakota Stapleton. Hopefully that's a C for tackle, not D. 
Cam Hoskins, definitely more of a, well, actually, he's sort of all over the place. A to, a to C for zone, B tackle, B hit power. If the zone ends up being really good, he could be a great prospect. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on these guys. All right, we went back and we ended up signing David Long. I gave him an extra, um, the three-year deal went from 9.6 to uh, 12. So I, I increased the signing bonus to about 2 million and then I increased the the salary to two as well. So he has re-signed now. Uh, Dearness Johnson, he was another one we were, um, you know, I'm really not a big fan of tying ourselves to a running back that's gonna be 29. So I'm gonna see if instead of him wanting a three-year deal, what if we can get him to take a one-year deal for a little bit extra money, right? Maybe that can entice him to stay. Just just that. One year for four million. Nope. That's still not up his alley. Okay. All right. Um, Bo Melton was another one that did not care to talk about us with the one-year deal. So let's go ahead and we'll do the neutral risk now and we'll see if that brings him home. We'll bring that up to eight. Okay. He did not like that either. Um, these guys are being picky, picky, picky. Blake Cashman is now available to re-sign. Let's go ahead and let's negotiate with him. I do like him coming back here, and I can definitely see him here for two more years. So we will go ahead and we'll offer him that, and he takes it. Perfect. All right, so now that we are in week eight, I do want to take a chance to see if we can find any trade partners for a couple of guys who just... You know, aren't really helping too much right now because our team isn't that great and I we could use more resources more than anything. So we're going to check out Marlon Mack here. We're going to go to trade away. Okay, so I've looked around at the injuries and I see that the Giants have an injury to Saquon Barkley and the, the guy behind him is a 65 overall. And even without his injury, which will be done in I think about a month, they don't have any sort of, you know, insurance for him. You know, like none at all. So Marlon Mack for two fifths. I'll also throw in a seventh next year to sort of offset that that second pick a little bit. But they're getting a solid number two back. He's 26 years old, and with Barkley's injury history, they're definitely going to need to have somebody there. So I'm going to go here for a fifth and fifth, one back to back years, and then I'm going to give up a seventh next year as well to sort of offset that a little bit. So they are getting a decent halfback in my opinion. I could probably get a third out of them, but I'm not gonna cheat the system like that. So uh, let's see if they'll take that. And they will. All right, so we get two fifth round picks for Marlon Mack and we drop off a seventh next year. We had three of them already, so I'm okay with that. Now it is officially Damian Pierce and <laughs> Dearness Johnson's show. I'm, I feel better about doing that anyway. I really do. Trying to see if there's anybody here. Maybe we could do, maybe we could trade him, right? And trade uh, Grieger Hill away and we could get Christian Harris in there a little bit more and try to grow him up before we get to the end of the season. Let's see, what can we get for, for, for Grieger Hill? I'm gonna be really, it's gonna be hilarious if I find out I've been saying his name wrong this entire series so far. All because I'm not paying attention. Um, I'm not seeing anything too extravagant here. And I do have to keep an eye out because this, like this Ombre Thomas, I'm pretty sure he's a young guy. Nobody's going to do that. I mean, he's like 30 years old, you know, so it's, it's difficult. You still have to be weary of what the CPU is offering you. Because sometimes they just don't know how to properly gauge, you know, player value. And once again, see like that. Why would somebody give me an 82 overall D tackle? You know, that just doesn't even make sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. I'm thinking of doing Jerron Christian Sr., but I have to check the Chiefs first to see if that even makes sense. Okay, so basically they've... They're willing to get rid of him. Be, well, see, that doesn't make sense because they, they could honestly start him at right tackle. So I, I can't do that either. That doesn't make um, that doesn't make much sense. And let's see, what do they have? Oh wow. Okay, I can see why now. Their linebackers are absolutely horrible. Oh man. 
Okay, so that I think that does make sense now. That makes sense. What do they have for draft picks? Maybe we'll just trade them for draft picks. We are going to bank on the fact that they are in desperate need of... I mean, these guys have a 68 overall starting right now. So we're going to go for a fourth rounder this year. And we will see if that comes to play. Grieger Hill is 28 years old. He's still got a couple years left on him. And um, he instantly becomes the starter and is the best linebacker. One of the, like their second best linebacker by far on this team. So we'll do it for a fourth rounder, see if they take that. And they will. There we go. We get Grieger Hill off for a fourth rounder. Like to see it. And now what we can do is we will actually have Christian Harris play outside here. Maybe have Cashman over here, and then we'll have Harris play right outside linebacker. Oh, he's already playing. Kirksey must have got... Oh, Kirksey's hurt. Oh, boy. I didn't even see that. So, Kirksey got hurt. He's only out for two weeks. So, um, okay. So, I probably should have checked that before I traded away. Um, uh, what's his name? But it, it doesn't matter, man. We we are defeated at this point, literally. We are 0-6. I'm not too concerned about that. There we go. Done with that portion. Let's go ahead and let's advance past this week. Oh boy, we it's getting worse and worse. Now we got our butts whooped by the Titans. 49 to 13. Yikes. We're gonna I'm pretty I, right now what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna sim forward until like week 12 or 13 and see what ends up happening once we get to the 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 focus players for scouting. And that's what we'll start looking more so at the at the uh, the draft board, okay? All right, so it was week 11. I don't know why I thought it was 12 or 13, but it's week 11. I just got here. And uh, first thing before we get there, we got our first win this week as well. We beat the Giants 36 to 22. Took us 10 weeks to do it, but we finally got a win. We did have one more story in the reactions page. At some point, Alabama wide receiver Andrew Perez has to realize he's part of the problem when it comes to issues with his coaches and teammates. Oh boy, all right, so either he's a hothead or he thinks he's good or I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, not good. Not good at all, and we, let's do our focus players right away. Yeah, we're choosing them. Of course we're choosing them. This is the part where I definitely want to start honing in on a few players that I definitely want to know as much as I can about. Let's go ahead, and I would like to do Leo Walsh. Yeah, I think I want to do Leo Walsh. Because he was a guy that I looked at earlier for a potential round two option. We definitely need some help at that position. I think I want to do Kenny Woodyard because we're going to be in a position to potentially take him. And if we're in a position to take one of the top five players, I think we definitely need to know as much about them as possible. So let's go ahead and let's add him as one. And then let's do... I think we got to do a quarterback. We have to have some top five prospects in here. So let's do Colin Walters, the the leader of Harvard. Let's just let's do that and we'll confirm that. And we'll see we'll see what happens. All right, so we end up winning two games in a row against the Commanders. Now we are two and eight. I did have a trench boost thing from last week, so let's take a look and see what we get there. Back to back games without allowing a sack, and that has to be something earning those big guys up front a ton of praise in the locker room. Let's see what we get. 10,000 XP for everybody on the offensive line for two awesome games. Wow, that is very helpful. That is awesome. We're going to sim a couple of more weeks here, maybe, maybe stop it and uh, check things out. But, I mean, it, like I said, this season is pretty much already done and over with, so I do want to get us to the offseason. Let's check out the players ready to negotiate, see if we can finish off some of these younger ones that I really wanted us to get taken care of. But I'm not seeing... I don't want to keep signing everybody. You know, we had a previous offer for that for one year. Um, fine, we'll we'll do. Let's do team friendly. Let's see if he takes that. That's a two-year deal. Let's see if he wants that one. Oh man, and we we messed it up. I, I'm sorry, man. I, I like Dearness Johnson, but I, I just don't know if I want to, you know, pay that much for a guy who I don't see even being our starter. Plus, I plan on bringing somebody in through the draft, so. It doesn't make much sense to sign him to a three-year deal. So he's going to be going to free agency. Bo Melton here. I mean, after this tough year. 
he's definitely going to want, you know, probably a, a player friendly deal. So let's go back to neutral. What was our last offer? 2.18. That's exactly what I was going to offer him again. Okay, let's let's offer him this. Okay, I think that's a decent deal. 7.2 for over two years. I mean, dude, you're a 68, man. You know, I get it. You're 23. I'm upping the bonus by a, a ton. Just take it. Okay, so he still wants more. I think it's going to be the three-year deal thing that what's gets him. I, I really think that's what's gonna what it's gonna end up taking. Uh, Rasheem Green, he's got some pretty good interest in re-signing with us. I do want to bring him back. Um, I think we will do player friendly two years. I think he deserves it. Yeah. You know what? No, we'll we'll do we'll do one year. We'll stick to the neutral. See if that works. Ooh, okay, man. Calm down, dude. He ain't that good. Upper, I'm moving on. Who do you think you're talking to, man? Who do you think you're talking to? Um, ooh, definitely want to try to get Sharping back, I think. And Weddington. Minshew. Okay, so not too many guys left that I really am worried about. Uh, so let's go here and we will sim another week and then we'll see what happens after that. Finally, we lose a game. That sounds horrible, but like, come on. Okay, four and nine, we lose to the Cowboys. We're in week 15. All right, we have some new stories now that we are in this week. Let's take a look at them. So we have Wes Oakley struggles to find rhythm in bowl game. Quarterback Wes Oakley looked uncomfortable all game long as UL Monroe struggled to establish any offense in their bowl game. A standout bowl performance from Ohio State strong safety Cassidy Curtis means he will be a hot name to watch leading into the NFL draft. That was the the he's the top strong safety in the class if you don't remember that. DT James Conner has wreaked havoc all year long and now owns the Tennessee record for sacks registered in a single season. That's something big to keep an eye on. Defensive end Kenny Woodyard embodies the pinnacle of intimidation. The Notre Dame product grew up as an enforcer playing hockey and doesn't shy away from contact. That is the, the, the guy that I have had my eye on almost this whole season. There's more than a few burners on Ohio State's roster, so the fact free safety Jamario Vance won the team sprint tournament should speak volumes. We got to write this stuff down here. All right, now taking a look at the prospects. We know 80% of Colin Walter's work. Let's see here. We have... So we know he has A, awareness, B, throw on the run, B, under pressure, B, deep and medium accuracy, and A, accuracy for short. So he looks like he is going to end up being a very good prospect. Top five pick as well. We now know 100% of Leo Walsh, and this man looks to be the guy I thought he was. 21 years old, 6'5", 246. He has round one talent, and everything about him looks to be good. As long as that speed checks out, this is a guy that I want to take. He's got A awareness, A break tackle, A catching traffic, A catching, B deep, A medium, A short route. He looks to be a serious stud at tight end. If we can get him in the second round, I think that would be awesome. And then we now know 80% of Kenny Woodyard. And it does not surprise me to see he's got A's. Let's see. He's got A finesse, B impact, B tackle. Injury is a C. Um, not, not bad, though. A finesse, C block shed, B awareness, C play rec. So, and then with that story on top of it about him just being like intimidation, I feel like he might be the best prospect that we could take with our pick, depending on where we pick, of course. We might not even have a chance to take him. So those are the three guys that we were able to learn more about. And then let's check out the James Conner. So this is the guy that they said was wreaking havoc. And he's a single, single season sack leader for Tennessee. He's got A power moves, B block shed, B play rec, and C awareness. So that's pretty good. Tackling's not very good, but that's okay. He's got the core abilities there. And then poor Wes Oakley fell 42 positions in the draft board after his poor performance. He's 5'11", too, so that pretty much kissed his career goodbye. All right, now we're getting back down to business. Now we're losing games again. Not good to see. Down to 4-10. and 10, Have a chance to lose to Tennessee. I'm, I sort of want Woodyard at this point after that story. 
I mean, that guy could be in menace on our D-line, him and Grenard. Can you imagine that? That would be an excellent pairing, in my opinion. And then we have got to do our final offers on players this week, since we won't be able to offer them before free agency. Well, we will. One more opportunity. But I would like to try and get that done before we get to the final week. So um, last time he was not a fan of what we offered. And quite frankly, I'm not sure if I even want to offer him. If we go to player friendly, that's a three-year deal. I know he's young, so don't, don't get me wrong there. But we have, yeah, I think we have John Mechie coming back. We have... Um, Weddington, who I think played pretty decently. We have Collins, we have Mims. You know, does it pay for us to tie our hitch to this guy for three years when we don't even know what he can do? So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to give him one last opportunity, man. One last opportunity. Um, Our last offer was two years. I'm done. I'm not playing these games with you anymore, man. Um, I'm going to offer you one year. And I'm going to up that a little bit. If you don't want to take that, then you can just go home, dude. I don't care. Okay, we're just done. We're not going to we're not going to negotiate with him anymore. Um, and then there was Rasheem Green, who definitely wanted to be Captain Cool Guy. And he didn't like what we offered him. Last time, what did we offer him last time? One year, 4.1 million. So he does not like that. He wants a two-year deal. And he does play inside for us as well as outside. So I think I think we'll make him this offer player friendly. There we go. And when Rasheem Green will resign. That's good. I don't think I'm bringing back Ito Smith. Um, not Luke Stocker. Not Brooks. Sharping, I definitely want to bring back. I think he's a solid fill-in piece. We're going to do player friendly. We're going to do a two-year deal with him. There we go. Sharping is back. I know they cut him in real life, but it's hard to get these younger, decent depth guys for linemen. And then Connor Weddington, Weddington is somebody I definitely want to bring back. We're going to offer him neutral risk, two-year deal. See if he takes it. Okay. So he wants something a little bit more, so we'll have to take another stab at him in the uh, one right before free agency. And let's see if we can bring Gardner Minshew back to town. Neutral risk. He's got good interest, though. There we go. Gardner Minshew's back in tow as our backup. And I think that's going to pretty much end our uh, our negotiations here. We'll see what happens with Kyle Allen, but I'm not too sure if I want to bring him back. Aside from Connor Weddington, everybody else has been signed that I give a dang about, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and let's go and make sure that there's no stories. Nope, nothing new, nothing new. Oh, so the Colts ended up being number one with the way they whooped us in week one. That does not surprise me. Somehow the Giants snuck in at the seventh seed. Wow, that must have been a rough year for the NFC. To have two NFC East teams make the playoffs? That, yeesh, must have been a bad year. Nothing too surprising here, honestly. Um, I'm a little surprised to see the Steelers there just because, you know, obviously with the quarterback situation. Not surprised to see Denver there. Those make sense over here. It's weird that Dallas is the number one team. LA, Atlanta's there? How in the world did Atlanta make the number three seed? Which means they had a better record than the Packers. Did Marcus Mariota have like some huge year? That is, wow, okay. Weird first year for sure. And now it's time for us to upgrade these players. Let's go and check out what we have available to us First and foremost, it's Brandon Cooks. And we are going to go playmaker for him because that's really what he's supposed to be for us as a playmaker. Okay, you get some good stuff there. JC Treader, we're going to go power to even that out a little bit. Brian Bulaga, power as well. Steven Nelson, going to get one to zone. Jonathan Grenard gets another one, and uh, we are going to do we're going to do Speed Rusher again. There we go. Nico Collins is going to get one. We're going to do that to Playmaker as well for him. You going to load in, or what are you going to do here? Okay, just going to have a black screen. Pretty good there for route running. 
Dearness Johnson's going to get one. Mr. Too Cool to negotiate with us. John Mechie gets one. Watching, waiting in the wings. And we will do Playmaker for him as well. Damian Pierce is going to get one. That's awesome to see. We're going to go... We're going to go another one power. And then we'll go back to Elusive after the next upgrade. Jalen Petrie gets one. We're going to do Zone for him. We got guys with, like, multiple ones, too. This is going to be fun. We got a long way to go with this. Ross Blacklock is going to get one. We're going to go... Uh, we're going to do Power Rusher again. I think that's his, his forte right there is Power Rushing. He's close to another one as well. Revan Jordan is going to get another one. We're going to do Possession again. Want him to be a great tight end. Tay Crowder, the linebacker we signed from the Giants. We're going to up that pass coverage for him. He's number one. That's definitely going to change. And I will be changing uh, Mechie to eight as well. I will be following suit with that. Davian Taylor is going to get one to pass coverage, and that's what we're going to stick that. See if we get some zone. We do three zone and one play wreck. Mr. Bo Melton. We'll go playmaker for him. He's close to another one, too. I'm going to check out his ratings once. I mean, his ratings that good that I should really, really go back. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He's really fast. Oh, crap. His release is crap, though. Oh, man. If he could return, that would be a, a no-brainer. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I offer him one last contract. And here's Mr. Connor Weddington. Going to do another playmaker for him. we go. Thomas Booker. I like Thomas Booker, man. I really do. Do uh, power rushing. Who the heck is Charlie Heck? He's got three upgrades, though. Do the power. Power again. Okay. Is this guy, like, good? Or not? Oh, well, he's 25. All right. Well, that was pretty decent upgrades for him. Derek Stingley's got two. Awesome to see that. We're going to put both of those in zone. His ratings are uh, very lopsided. His zone is very low, so we definitely have to get that raised up. I'm excited to see what Stingley's going to bring to this team in the future. I think he's going to be an awesome corner for us. Hopefully, he's our number one at some point. We get a lot of good zone there for him. And now his zone is up to 74. Will Hernandez is going to get two. That's another big piece there. We're going to try to get his agility back up so that way it is more balanced. And then we'll do one to power as well. There we go. Titus Howard also has two. That's good for him. He might be able to uh, secure a spot on this team then. I was still a little upset that I didn't get a chance to bring him back. I don't know why that is. That used to be a thing every year. You could just, you know, after eight weeks, you brought him back. But he'll definitely be on the team. Davis Mills getting two. Now we're getting into the guys that have two different ones. They're like two, you know, upgrades. So he gets Improviser, and then we'll do another one to Field General. That'll definitely open up some options for our playbooks. Because I definitely think we're going to be changing playbooks this year. Christian Harris is going to get two. We're going to put that all towards pass coverage. There we go. It's up to a 71. Max Sharping also getting two. That's good. Do that to um, power. And we'll do one to agility as well. Oh, wow. He jumped up. He's almost going to get another upgrade now. All right. Kenyon Green is getting three upgrades. That is awesome. So we'll do one to power. We'll do two to power and one to, to agility. With that. Boom. Well, if his agility keeps going up with it, I'm just going to keep going power. Okay. It didn't that time. So we'll actually, we'll do one to pass protection. Here we go. Perfect. Perfection. Now he's up to a 77 when the morale isn't messing with him. All right. And then we end up having... Oh, wow. 
Look at this. The Steelers goose egged the Colts 30 to nothing. That's what you get for embarrassing us in week one in our own stadium. And then the Ravens beat the Chiefs. So very unlikely pairing here that I, I mean, this looks like, what is this, 2008 again? The Ravens and Steelers in a championship game? Then we have the Cowboys beating the Commanders and then the Falcons beating the Rams. What a strange playoff scenario for the championship. Pro Bowl roster time. Let's take a look. Prescott, Mahomes, Brady, and Bridgewater. Bridgewater? How did he... What? Did they end up replacing him in Miami? Wow. Wow. That's crazy. So Tua got benched in Miami. Man, this is like a remake of the Vikings series. <laughs> That's what happened to him there. He got, he got replaced. He went to Tampa. And then Stafford and Jackson for the quarterbacks, Elliott, Taylor, Kamara, Henry, Jones, and Jacobs for the halfbacks, blasting game, neighbors, use check and angle at fullback, Cup, Hill, James Washington, okay, Tyler Boyd, Devontae Smith, Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, Stephon Diggs, Chris Godwin, Keenan Allen, Adam Thielen and Kendall Bourne for wide receivers. Dalton Schultz, Hunter Henry, Tanyan and Kelsey, Hawkinson and Waller for tight ends. Smith, Armstead, Williams, Miller, Norwell, Nelson, Whitehair, Thuny, Hudson, Humphrey, Ragnow, Lindsley, Martin, Sheriff, Mason, Teller, Wirfs, Collins, Johnson, Conklin for the offensive line. Uh, we have Demarcus Lawrence, Emmanuel Agba, Eric Armstead, Greg Russo, Aaron Donald, Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, Von Miller, Kenny Clark, DeForest Buckner. Jonathan Allen, I believe. Yeah, Jonathan Allen, Ed Oliver, D. Brown. Who the heck is D. Brown? Why can't I think of his name? Jones, Ojulari, Crosby. Barrett, Bosa, Collins, Brown, Wagner, Cunningham, Smith, Khalil Mack, of course. Of course he's going to go. Parsons, Allen, and then we have Diggs, Jackson, Johnson, Moore, Harris, Sertan, Douglas, Awuzie, McCann, Peppers, Williams, Yard, Earl, Abram, Brisker, Harrison, and then special teams, we got Santos, Blankenship, Kamarda, Morstead, Scotty Miller, Elijah Molden, I believe his name is, Josh Reynolds, and Ford at Returners. So yeah, I just read off those names really fast. I didn't want to spend too much time on them. We don't have a single player in the entire Pro Bowl, not one. And now let's take a look at the yearly awards. Dak Prescott ends up winning MVP, followed up by Patrick Mahomes. Teddy Bridgewater did. What? We're going to have to check out the stats after this. Coach of the year, of course, Mike McCarthy. And then the AFC, Jonathan Taylor winning uh, Offensive Player of the Year with Lamar Jackson right behind. No surprise there. Khalil Mack, Von Miller, Miles Garrett, all the usual suspects. Reese Hall wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Not surprised to see that. George Pickens winning, so coming in second. Traylon Burks. All right. Damian Pierce was number six. Defensive rookie Devin Lloyd ended up having a good season. Trent McDuffie, Eric Stingley, Thos, Thos Gardner. Over in the NFC, Cooper Cup won winning Offensive Player of the Year, followed up by Kamara and James Washington. It's a very unexpected name, James Washington there. Defensive, defensively, it was Aaron Donald, Nick Bosa, Demarcus Lawrence, Roquan Smith, all the sort of the usual suspects there as well. Drake London wins Rookie of the Year. Jahan Dotson right behind him, Jameson Williams, Kenneth Walker, and defensively it's Aiden Hutchinson, Brisker, Andrew Booth, Avon Thibodeau, pretty good names. And now let's see how we finished the season stat-wise. So Davis Mills ended with 4,500 yards passing, 27 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, a rating of 88.5. Uh, not the best, not the worst season, especially considering the, the pieces we have here for him. Damian Pierce did not have a very good season. He sort of ended up splitting carries a little bit. 
658 yards. He, he did have seven touchdowns. Dearness Johnson had four touchdowns on 328. We did not run enough at all. Uh, receiving, Chris Conley led the way. Uh, Brandon Cooks right behind him. Brevin Jordan, Nico Collins, and Denzel Mims. I'd like to see this. Some good players here defensively. We had seven and a half sacks by Jonathan Grenard. Rasheem Green with seven right behind him. Blacklock at five. And then interception-wise, we did not have many turnovers. Kirksey and Stingley tied for three. Nelson with two and then a whole bunch of dudes at one. And now looking at the full league, Brady, even though his Bucks got swept by the Falcons, I think, ended up having a really good year. Same with Teddy Bridgewater, 5,200 yards, 43 touchdowns, and 12 picks. What in the heck happened in this, in this file here? How did he end up the starter? I'm so confused right now. Jonathan Taylor, almost 1,900 yards and 17 touchdowns. No surprises here to see these names up here. Receiving Cooper Cup, 22 touchdowns for Cooper Cup. What? 1,800 yards. Wow. Wow. James Washington had 18 touchdowns. What in the world is happening with this game this year? Aaron Donald had 28 and a half sacks in the sim. Nuts. Von Miller with 23, Mack with 21, Garrett with 20. Whoa, this is a lot of sacks. That sounded really bad. Cameron Curl led the entire league with six picks. Fresh start meant a great season for him. So, all right, wow. But uh, yeah, um, so we're gonna do our final. I think this year, I'm gonna work it a little different. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the re-signings as if it is part of the of the season. So at the end of the, the final game that we watch or whatever, before we do the off-season video, I'm gonna do the re-signs and just get that out of the way completely. Because I do feel like that's a separate issue, like a separate part. I don't ever view that as being the new season, right? Like in the real life, I like when the free agency day hits, that's what I see as the real start of the new season. So. We're going to do the, the re-signs before we get to the off-season video and just have that done and out of the way. And then when we do the off-season video, it's literally just free agency, looking at the draft board, getting to the draft, and getting to the next season. So let's take a look and see what we are going to be dealing with today. Oh, I forgot Will Hernandez. Oh, man. Weddington, yes, he is a priority for me. Got to bring him back. I like Weddington. We're going to go player-friendly for him. And we're gonna give him a decent offer here. We're gonna up that to a million too. Three years, 10 mil. That's pretty good for a 68. What? Connor. That was uncalled for, man. Ain't nobody gonna give him a three year, $11 million deal. A punk. Definitely not bringing back Stanford. And we're gonna leave Kyle Allen to hit free agency. We'll just see what's available to us. Uh, so we're not bringing back Brooks, we're not bringing back Stalker, we're not bringing back Smith, probably not Conley, definitely not Landon Collins, um, not, not bringing him back, we'll bring somebody else in, would like to bring back Tay Crowder, I think he's a decent player to have as a fill-in guy, but not at that, I'd rather do a team-friendly one-year deal. And he's not interested either. Okay, so it looks like a lot of these guys are going to have to go to free agency. Will Hernandez, though, I do want to sign. We're going to do neutral. He's going to want... He wants a lot of money. Dang, we're going to have to retool this whole thing in free agency. I got to try and create some cap space, too. It says we only have 21 mil available. Probably due to all of the, the draft picks we have, which makes sense. So let me go ahead and do that, and uh, yeah. Titus Howard is way overpaid, severely overpaid. Um, looking here at his contract, look at this. He is taking up $13.2 million, and I can save all of that by cutting him right now. I, I have to do this. I, I just doesn't, I cannot keep him for that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut Brian Belaga right now. Get that out of the way. Release. Okay. 
And then we are also going to, we're gonna release JC Treader into free agency. Hopefully we can get him back, but who knows? There might be a better option there for us once we get to free agency too, you know what I mean? Um, we are gonna cut Titus Howard. This is way too much money. Way too much money to me for me to give give him. I, I just can't do that. Um let's see who else? Who else could we cut for some more money? Um Eric Murray, we're gonna cut him. Saved ourselves another four million there. And so yeah, so let me go ahead. Let's sim to so you know what? Now I feel like I almost need to go after Bo Melton if, if Weddington's going to be a punk. So let me go back here and let's let's do one more negotiation with him. We're going to do a team friendly. Three years. What was our last offer? Oh yeah. Okay. So we're going to give him what he wants. Three years. I'll up this. Three years, 12. He still doesn't want to take. Screw yourself, Bo Melton. All right, so we are in free agency. I'm not even going to look at anything. Uh, we have the combine results we'll be able to check out. We'll be obviously trying to fill this roster that is now depleted after a lot of the, the fill-ins guys that we brought in are gone. Uh, we have some tough decisions to make. We need some players. We might need to do some trades. 77 overall offense, 75 overall defense. We have definitely got to do what we can to get that up there fast. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I know this was no game, no off season. It was just more of a getting through the season, seeing where our team is at thing. But again, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe if you are not already. And then I'll see you guys next time with our first off season of the series.